Hi. We talked in a previous video about some kinds of fairly active sensory activities you could do um, that might support your child if they're craving proprioceptive or vestibular input. But today I wanted to talk about um, if your child needs the opposite, <laughs> if your child is um, is, is not, not wanting that kind of input and needs to have the sensory input that they're receiving reduced a significant amount. So, so the kind of things we talked about to increase sensory input were were around jumping and swinging and rhythmic activities, dancing, uh, rubbing hand cream on each other, gentle, applying gentle pressure, um, either with your hands or with a beach ball or perhaps with a sofa cushion, um, maybe even making an obstacle course in your living room out of chairs and sofa cushions and things for children to climb over and climb under, um, and perhaps using weighted blankets as well if, you, if you're lucky enough to have one of those. But today we're going to be looking slightly more at activities that are more calming and, and can perhaps promote regulation, but still have a kind of sensory basis. Um, so I think the first one to talk about is breathing. Um, it, focusing on our breathing can really bring us into the moment, um, especially if we're feeling anxious. This is really useful for us as parents as well. Um, I remember hearing a tip years ago that a toddler takes... Um, up to seven seconds to process what you've said to them and if you repeat the request within that seven seconds they just start the process of, of processing it all over again uh, and so you, you ask the toddler what you want them to do and then you count to seven in your head while breathing uh, and then you should see the penny drop and um, and maybe they'll, they'll actually process what you've said and begin to do it uh, as a parent I often fall into the category of being too impatient asking for something and then asking for it again within almost a millisecond before the child's had a chance to do it and um, in times of high anxiety or if your children are um, socially and emotionally not quite as developed um, as others of their age group you might find that a useful tip for yourself when you're expecting your children to do things or asking them to comply with certain things make your request count to seven in your head breathe and then see if your child actually responds to it. I found that works remarkably well. Um, in terms of you and your children breathing, the, one of the ways to think about breathing is to do four, seven, eight breathing. So you breathe in through your nose while you count to four, uh, watching your belly expand as you do that. So you're breathing right deeply into the bottom of your lungs. And then you hold that breath to a count of seven and then you breathe or blow out through your mouth while counting to eight. Now, for younger children, that might be hard to do, but you can um, reframe that as sniffing a flower and then and then blowing out a candle. Sniffing a, a flower for four, hold your breath and then blowing out the candle. And that might help them to understand what it is that you're trying to do. Um, just doing that a couple of times actually can take the stress out of a situation that's becoming more heated. If you can't encourage your child to engage with you doing that, even just doing that yourself uh, will enable you to carry on responding in, in the calm way that your child needs you to. You may want to create a calm zone in your house, a sensory calm space. If you have a pop-up tent, um, either a child's pop-up tent or a, a genuine one or two-man camping tent and space to pop that up, not permanently, but it might be good to put that up some afternoons in your house, put some cushions in there, um, put some uh, blankets inside, put some soft toys in, maybe books, gentle things that your child might enjoy getting into a dark space and just having familiar comforting items that smell good and that feel nice uh, and, and give them the opportunity to just be calm and quiet in there. Another way to bring regulation into a crazy household, um, and this is something that's best done before things have got out of hand, is to try some activities, however short, that uh, require your child to focus closely on something that they're doing. Um, so, so if your child's already dysregulated and really struggling, it can be hard to begin this because they don't have the level of, they're not in a place where they can begin. But if you can see things beginning to escalate in that way, you might be able to head it off with a close focus activity. So this can be something really simple. It can be colouring. Um, it could be threading uh, beads. Um, it could be jigsaw puzzles or any kind of puzzle. Um, it could be even more simple than that, tipping water or sand from one container to another, um, sticking stickers on things, crafts, anything like that. If your child struggles to concentrate on that for a long period of time, that's okay. The purpose of this is not to have your child occupied for half an hour while you have a cup of tea, although that would be lovely. Um, but the purpose in this case is to just encourage your child to focus in on something small, something really finite in front of them um, and, and put their energies into that and, and hopefully distract them away from the from the emotions and the and the stress that was causing them to get um dysregulated not so that you can then ignore those emotions but so that you're able to deal with them when things are calm rather than having a full-scale meltdown on your hands uh, if your child does struggle to do that at all um i 
just begin it with really low expectations. Don't set a time limit how long you expect them to do it. Don't feel too concerned if they stop doing it after a short period of time. And try to increase the amount of time they try doing something like that a little bit by seconds every day until you can get it up to a few minutes. Um, and that close focus will support them to, to, to calm. Um, another way to um, create focus is to do activities that involve them having to listen. Uh, this is a good skill for children to practice anyway at all times. But playing games or doing activities where your children are going to need to listen. So uh, like just even as simple as Simon says, um, or listening to music or drawing a picture or creating arts and crafts that are inspired by the music. And listening to a story being read, either by you or by somebody online. Uh, there's lots of that going on at the moment. Um, so anything that where any any kind of activity where you will you or somebody else will speak and the child needs to listen either for a short period or a bit longer and again it can bring the temperature down and it can uh, help to bring uh, some regulation um, into the situation. So those are some basic and very simple ideas. I'm certain that you already know and can come up with lots more ideas than that. But we're thinking about these areas: the breathing, the calm sensory calm area the close focus and the listening activities and all of these things, if you can pitch them at the right time and at the right level, can be used to support your child to remain regulated and to support you as the adult to remain regulated because that's the most important key to having regulated children is unregulated adults. And if we can keep ourselves regulated during these difficult times, then we'll be doing uh, the best thing possible for our children and our families. So I hope that's been helpful. Bye.